Well, you know, uh, the atmosphere here in Kyiv, in Ukraine's capital, is in a way surreal because on the one hand, people are trying to live their normal lives. You know, they go to work, they send their children to school. Uh, but on the weekends, they also go to uh, first aid courses. They go to train with the territorial defense units. We've seen a surge in uh, volunteers signing up for these units that would be protecting uh, Kyiv in a case uh, Russia decides to launch an attack on Ukraine's capital. So, uh, you know, people... Uh, hope that uh, Russia will not dare to uh, launch a new aggression on Ukraine, still they are preparing for any eventuality because Ukraine has been living with this war since 2014 and the uh, threat that uh, it might widen and it might include other regions of Ukraine, not just Donbass as it is now, has always been there, but now it feels more real. Yeah. And when you say you've been living with this for some time, what sort of impact does that have on people and, and what is the sense of wanting to defend this nation at this very critical juncture? Yes, well, uh, since Russia attacked Ukraine in 2014, uh, more than 14,000 lives have been lost. So, you know, Ukraine has paid a big price for, for this war, for uh, in this uh, Russian aggression. And however, uh, the spirit of Ukrainians is unbroken and people are ready to mobilize and to defend their country because, uh, uh, you know, like the independence and the sovereignty of Ukraine is very important. We are seeing undemocratic uh, states on our northern and on our eastern border. I'm referring to Russia and Belarus and seeing the level of repression there and the fact that there is no position, no free elections, no free media, and people are arrested just for posting things on social media makes a lot of Ukrainians value uh, the democracy and the freedoms we have here. And it also fills people with determination to fight for them. What is your sense of the support coming from the West, from the United States? Is it enough? Well, uh, the support has been really felt here in Ukraine and it also, you know, boosts the morale of people here because uh, uh, the, the, some countries, the US, UK, um, Czech Republic, the Baltic states, uh, Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia, they've been sending defensive equipment and weapons to Ukraine in recent weeks in order to boost Ukraine's capacity to defend itself. And uh, this is very much appreciated here in Ukraine. There was a rally yesterday in central Kyiv when people went out to say thank you to those countries that are supporting Ukraine. So uh, this support is very important, but it's not yet enough to deter uh, further Russian aggression. I think the West should be raising the costs for Russia even more. Yeah. So the Security Council is going to meet later today, the UN Security Council. They've got this on the agenda. But uh, Vladimir Putin is not likely to necessarily be concerned by that. Do you think they should move to sanctions as a preemptive strike? Well, the Ukrainian government was certainly advocating that, uh, especially sanctions on Nord Stream 2, the Russian pipeline that would uh, transport natural gas to Germany, bypassing Ukraine and uh, exposing Ukraine, uh, making it more vulnerable to uh, to Russian attacks. Uh, so the Ukrainian government was saying that the Nord Stream 2 should be sanctioned and that some sanctions should be imposed in Russia as a preemptive measure. But, but as I understand, this is a hard sell uh, in the West and uh, it's mostly prepared to react if and after Russia launches uh, any kind of attack on Ukraine, which might not come in a direct you know, form of, of a direct military aggression. It might come on several fronts, including cyber attacks, terrorist threats and attempts to overthrow Ukrainian government. Yeah. What is the most likely way, do you think, Russia will continue to destabilise Ukraine, if not through an invasion? Well, I think Russia has a, a, a you know a variety of measures in its playbook that it used in in uh, previous years in Ukraine and in other parts of the world. So, uh, first of all, it's a threat of a military uh, attack, but also, uh, as I mentioned, cyber attacks. And there were already cyber attacks on Ukrainian government websites several weeks ago. Uh, Russia might also try to strike the objects of critical infrastructure of Ukraine, electricity grids, and you know, uh, try to disconnect uh, uh, Ukraine from from power power and uh, switch off the telecommunications. It might also use its agents of influence, try to uh, destabilize Ukraine from within, uh, organize protests and uh, somehow attempt to overthrow the Ukrainian government. And the UK intelligence has been warning about that in, in recent weeks and Ukrainian authorities. Uh, they also tend to agree that um, it's not just a threat of a military invasion, that the threats might be coming on multiple fronts. So Ukrainians should be alert and prepared to defend themselves on this 
different kinds of prompts. Yeah. We do appreciate your time, Olga. It's such a very tricky uh, a time and a difficult time for you all uh, day to day. Thanks so much. Thank you for your interest.